Good morning, church family. Good morning. Good morning to those that are at home on Zoom and uh, uh, Facebook and uh, uh, what YouTube and what other channels uh, Tom's managed to put us on. Uh, next time you see or talk to Tom too, you need to thank him uh, for the messages that he sends out and for the organization that he's done with us for our AV stuff. Uh, just a few little notes to start today. It is a beautiful Sabbath day out there, and we have to be thankful to the Lord for that. We have a great sermon lined up for us today, and we also have a very good uh, Sabbath school thing. Uh, and we even have something we haven't had in a while, and we're going to uh, uh, start off with that in just a minute. But let us all uh, please uh, say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for our family. We thank you for the people that help run the church, Father, and we thank you for our pastor. We ask you to be with us this day as we study the Bible. And Father, we know we're in many different locations, and we still ask for your grace and your covering wings to protect us and keep us. Father, open our hearts and our minds to the Bible that we can see what the next step is that we have to do, and not to be afraid, Father, to put all of our faith in you. Please guide us, direct us, and keep us. We ask this in our great and holy name. Amen. Okay, our special today is uh, Brother Simon. He's going to uh, play us a uh, music, and then we'll jump right into Sabbath school. Good morning. Good morning. The title of my special is Holy Day, Jehovah's Rest. It has to do with the Sabbath. Sabbath, everyone. Thank you so much, Brother Simon. That was beautiful as usual. I'm very excited to be here today. God is so good to us, and He uses us in very special ways. And I'm so grateful to Him for all that He's done for me and my children and for each one of you. Um, let's seek the Lord in prayer at this time. Dear Father in heaven, you are so good to us, Lord, and you share with us your love for us and you're appreciative towards us, Lord, for, for listening to you, for responding to your call, dear God. We pray this morning, Lord, that you would continue to use this church and that you continue to use the members of the church, Lord, to, to be a witness for you, to talk about the things that Jesus Christ has done for us things that he did when he walked here on this earth a man just like us lord the, the many miracles that took place the hearts that were changed and the lives that were 
healed and relationships that were mended and the joy that was brought. Um, Father, all those things are available to us today as we, um, as we continue to believe in Jesus and, and share the good news of, um, of Jesus dying on the cross for us and being resurrected again. So we pray this morning for that Holy Spirit that was promised to us, Lord, when Jesus ascended into the sky. And we ask that we might receive that Holy Spirit this morning and that we would be changed and that um, we would be filled with the joy that it gives. Bless us this morning, Father, and may the message be from you and not from me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so I'm really excited. Um, I wanted to start off this morning by looking at the lesson. So we are less in lesson two. And our book is Making Friends for God. And um, I just wanted to kind of share one of my joys about getting into the lesson book every quarter. And so back in elementary school, or junior high, more specifically, we used to have binders that were just white or black. And we would write on them. We would write, Vida Loca, or we would write... Um, smile now, you know, cry later. We would write our names and um, whatever, whatever was on our hearts that day, we would write and we would, you know, write on our binders. Anyhow, as I go through my lesson book, um, each quarter, I pull something from the lessons that really touched me and stood out. And I like to write on my quarterlies. And just an example, I have here written on the front, repent and turn to God. Um, respond to his love, accept his grace, be transformed by his spirit. Uh, kindness opens hearts. And God is passionate about saving people, nothing more important. And then at the end of the quarter, my book is usually filled with, you know, scribbles on the front and the back. And that's kind of, you know, putting what's inside the book on the outside on the cover for me. So as I go back and I look at my quarter leaves, um, that's just really fun for me, you know, just to pull what I, what I, what I really enjoy. Um, so this morning, our lesson is Win Some Witnesses, the Power, the Personal Testimony. If we can go to Acts 4.20, that is our memory verse this morning, or it was our memory verse for the week. And in the New King James Version, it says, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. But I like my new international version. And it says, for we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. And uh, I like that because it's like, we can't help it. We just, we just have to talk about it because it's that good. It's that moving. It's that much on our mind. You know, we are just, we can't think of anything else other than what we've seen and we've heard, what has happened, that good news, you know, that joy, you know. Um, Christina, one of our sisters of the church, um, this is neighbor, she was healed from cancer. And, and we all here, we were praying for her and, um, you know, just very touched because she was close to our sister and brother here at church. And, you know, our hearts were, you know, hurting for her and we had a lot of hope for her and you know the Lord healed her and she's cured and freed of her cancer so us as a church we were just so joyful and we just had to tell other people about it you know and it, it, in these days are like the days back then when Jesus walked the earth in a sense where Jesus is still healing today his message is still strong and there's still power in the name of Jesus so I'm just very grateful um, to know him and to know that there is power in the name of Jesus. Um, okay, so with that, um, I kind of wanted to just touch on this verse a little bit. So when we read this verse, what has got Peter and John to this point? Like, what is this verse in response to? What has taken place here? Um, so we see that they were being commanded by the Sanhedrin to speak or to teach in Jesus' name. What, to not speak or teach in Jesus' name, excuse me. And, um, and they had no explanation other than this verse is, you know, this verse simply says, for we cannot help it. Well, I'm sorry, this is just who we are, but we are a people 
that speak and teach in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, I think that is just so special, you know. So, um, so they were being commanded by the Sanhedrin not to speak or teach in Jesus' name. Also, they tell the Sanhedrin, judge for yourselves whether it's right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. You know, they, they're just kind of just putting them out there and just say, look, this is what it boils down to, you know. Um, we, we, were, we, have to, we have to speak of these things. And, um, and also, they were just, they were wonderful believers of something so great. They had a great story to share with others, and they were filled with hope and life and a good future. You know, their hearts were so won over by Jesus. This is what this, this verse is also speaking to me that Peter and John's hearts were so won over by Jesus. Um, and, um, and his power and his love and the experience that they, they experienced um, that great power, you know, so they, had, they had just had to share. Um, so what miracle, there was something that had taken place here that, that stirred up the air, okay? So, um, that even brought the Sanhedrin to want to, you know, tell them to quit, you know, preaching in Jesus' name, quit speaking in his name. And what had happened was there was a miracle. There was a man that had been crippled. Now, if we can relate to this story, um, say there's a favorite grocery store that we have, and there is um, a homeless man who's outside the grocery store, and he's just there on the ground. He has a blanket, his legs, he can't move them. And he doesn't look up to anybody. He just has his head down. And he might say out to you as you pass by, you know, please give me some money. You know, he has no smile on his face. Um, he has no joy. And he's just discouraged. And um, so just imagine being this man. And so there was, there was really a cripple, right? There was a cripple at the, the gate, the temple gate of beautiful, I believe. And... Um, so it's a beautiful story that happens at the gate of beautiful. So, um, so if we can just imagine, you know, being that cripple and not even looking up in anybody's eyes. And then one day somebody comes and tells us, you know, look at me, you know, look at me, look in my eyes, you know, and you're thinking, look at you, you know, no, not me. I can't look at anybody. You know, who am I? And uh, this man, he looks up at Peter and John and, and they tell him, you know, I have nothing to give you of silver and gold. I don't have what you ask for of me. But I have to tell you something. That in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And, you know, I don't think that man even had time to think about it. You know, he just simply, I mean, who knows what was going through his mind right at that moment. But all that we know is that the next thing that happened was that that man rise up and he walked. And the scripture says that he went walking and leaping and praising God, walking and leaping and praising God. And in the name of Jesus Christ, he rose up and walked. Amen. And uh, I just think that is such a beautiful story. And so, so, um, so from by experience, our two greatest expectations, if we were that beggar, would have been, you know, for one, somebody not to have um, given us anything, money or food, and then two, you know, to have received, you know, maybe some money or food. But this man instead, he received something much greater. And not only did he receive strength in his legs so that he could walk, but he also received a heart that praises the Lord, that loves the Lord, that believes in the power of Jesus Christ. So those legs were meant to walk and to praise the Lord and to share that message with others, that there's power in the name of Jesus. So, um, so the point here is that the San that Sanhedrin was missing, was obvious to all of those around them. So the town was a witness to this, okay, because there was friends of the crippled man that would carry him to the temple gates, you know, every day so that he can ask for money. And there was people that passed those gates every day that would see this man, and I'm sure their hearts went out to him. And so there were many witnesses here. And um, the Sanhedrin, they were missing 
what was obvious to the people that, that were a witness to all of this. And, um, and the obvious thing was that um, the miracle that was done. So, so now that put the Sanhedrin in a sort of position where they seem to be won over as well. Their response no more was, you know, we can't really do anything to these guys, you know. We don't want them to preach in Jesus' name or, or um, heal in his name, but we can't really punish them because, um, because it's, it's just obvious. It's just obvious that, um, that we're just all praising God here. And um, so that, that brings me to the title, um, which is Winsome Witnesses. So the power of personal testimony. Does this cripple and ex beggar have a powerful testimony to give? Yes, he does. Did his experience give him an attractive character? Now we're talking about the meaning of winsome here because winsome, um, it gives that attractiveness character to the witnesses, for the witnesses. So, um, so yes, I think that it does. Um, did this experience give him an attractive character? I think that it did. Well, what kind of character does he now have? Does this cripple now have before he was sad, helpless, lonely maybe? And now he is happy and joyful and thankful and appreciative. He is that kind of a man. Is that attractive for a man to be happy and joyful and appreciative and to share the love of Christ with others? Yes, I think it is. Um, yes. Is Jesus Christ attractive? Yes, Jesus Christ is very much attractive. So why are we afraid to speak of him or what he's done for us? Um, does he give us an attractive character? Yes, he does. He does. He does just get, knowing him, give us an attractive character. Yes, it does. Knowing him gives us an attractive character as well. So there's lots of yeses in Jesus this morning. And, um, and I, that's just, that's just so powerful. And is there power in personal testimony? Yes, there is power in personal testimony. Just like this cripple, he has a powerful personal testimony. Okay, so that's how we're opening up today, is um, just becoming excited and, and realizing what a winsome witness means. You know, there's an attractiveness to the witnessing, you know, people are going to be healed, they're going to be joyful, they're going to be changed. Um, if we were going to go on to Sunday's lesson, and it's unlikely witnesses, very powerful story here. And if we go to Mark 15, 5, 15 through 20. I'm going to go ahead and turn here in my Bible. This is my favorite Bible. My mom gave it to me. Mark 5, 15 to 20. And we're gonna talk about another story of, um, of what the power of knowing Jesus has done in someone's life. Very powerful here, let's read. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion. Hmm, what is legion? Of demons sitting there, dressed and in his, and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people that had what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. The question here, it says, why do you think Jesus sent the man into Decapolis to witness to his family and friends rather than nurturing him in his newfound faith by keeping him with himself? I think Jesus wanted to um, 
let people see for themselves because you see there there was already many witnesses um, in place here because this whole town knew of this man and this man was violent man um, he had many demons that lived in him people were people were um, afraid of him afraid to be around him afraid to know him you know probably afraid to be his friend so I could uh, probably assume that he was lonely and we have an answer to this question as well so let's uh, miss norma go ahead okay i've been thinking about this a lot mm -hmm. and so you know jesus told certain people to come and follow me mm -hmm. people who was on the train but this particular man he had been in that graveyard tearing himself chains couldn't hold him down and the accomplishment 10 pounds so everybody knew him. Anyone who came to that area was attacked by him. So, and then some of the leaders came and told Jesus to leave and get out, right? They didn't because they feared it. Because he told the demons to run into the pig, but the pigs were their bishops making money off the lawn. So, okay, here we go. He sends them back. The man is so happy. The people see him. They go, wait a minute. I know him. That's that crazy man acting, you know. And so he's saying, he's publishing, he's probably saying, Oh, yeah, look at me now. And then he tells them what Jesus is doing. They are so excited. He goes to every town. Jesus comes back about nine months later. Guess what? The people come out, they welcome him, they want to hear what he has to say because of this man's personal wit. Of what Jesus did for him. And you know, we don't always think about it, but we have witness too. Mm -hmm. And and I know like uh I was talking to some of my relatives, unbelievers, can you believe that? But they are. And they said to me, You just have good luck. I said, No, that's the blessings of Jesus. And now they say to me, Jesus loves you, darling. I better get to know him. Send me some of your Sabbath school books. So that's what I started to witness. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And you know, we have, there's many stories here in our time as well where we have seen the power of God shoo away an evil power or an evil spirit. And I can speak for from experience that um, that I have seen an evil spirit enter somebody and when i say that that one minute this person was fine you know not did not have um a, a bad word on his tongue was not acting you know meanly or violently or anything and from and there was a stop that was made and i, I don't know i can't explain everything but all i know is that once everybody got back in the vehicle to get on commute to go back home that this small child was um just cursing just cursing and cursing and it was very troubling um to us in the vehicle and we were not understanding what was going on right away but then it was like no we know what's going on what it, what has happened something has you know evil has taken place here and and this child cannot control himself you know he cannot um stop just cursing and fussing and just starting to want to hurt himself and things it was very troubling um, and the only response that we had in the car was, we have to pull over and pray. Something, something has happened here. And all we knew to do was to pull over and pray. And by God's grace and by the power in Jesus' name, um, there was other little ones in the car. And I just remember we all just closed our eyes and we all bowed our heads. And we prayed that whatever was tormenting this child would just leave him alone. And in Jesus' name that, that he would be freed from whatever has taken over him. And I have to say that the next moment, we experienced something very heavenly because there was another presence in the vehicle at the time. And, um, and it just seemed, it, it just, we had the effect that there was angels wings wrapped, wrapped around this child because the next thing was, it looked like he was being held. He was no longer fussing. He was no longer spitting out words, but he just wanted to sleep and be calm and be still and you know if anybody knows a fussing child is not easy to just calm down 
you have to take the time to soothe them and maybe they'll be fussing for an hours on end before they wear themselves out but th that was not the case here it didn't take very long at all after the prayer was made in Jesus's name so it's very very powerful um, to pray in the name of Jesus and so this story here about this de de demoniac I can just imagine that just like a drug addict you know you're away from your family a lot you actually don't get to know your family anymore you you don't spend time with them any longer you're kind of like the outcast you know nobody really wants to be around you because you behave differently and maybe you're you don't even have your attention span isn't there so i can just imagine what this man's family was like you know of course they want him to come home he's been healed they can finally enjoy him they can finally get to know him they can finally spend that time and and just talk with him and 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 um you know so i, I think god had very many reasons why he sent him back home to be a witness there to all the people and and also because i'm sure this man carried a um, a joy of, of for the Lord as well you know he came into a knowing of God not just being relieved of these spirits and just you know okay I don't have those spirits anymore no now he also had a knowledge of, of who Christ was and, and of the power and he was able to share and um, so it's a very 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 um, beautiful story here um, Okay, at the bottom of the page here for Sunday, it says, what's your own story? And it says that that is your own conversion story. What do you tell others about how you came to faith? What can you offer someone unconverted who could benefit from the experience you can share? So we could just think about maybe what our own stories are, that what has something took place in our lives, you know, whether it be we lost a loved one or or maybe we were addicted to drugs or alcohol and then we were freed from that addiction and and that that's what converted us maybe we used to walk around just thinking we were worthless you know but god gave us something um a job instead you know maybe we didn't have a job but he gave us a job and we realized that we do have value in a workplace and we have a place here and a purpose in this life um so let's continue to share Okay, Brother Frank. Yeah, I just wanted to say uh, we all do have a personal testimony, and that testimony, uh, God gives it to each one of us, so that we can uh, we can share what God has done for us. And each of our testimonies is different. So someone may be struggling with a certain thing. Well, I may not. If that certain thing may not affect me, but someone else has been affected by that same thing and god has got has given victory to that person so that person can go and and, and testify of this amazing victory that god has given him so all of us have a different story of how god has set us free and we are to go and share that you know I may not know the people that, that are in Crosby that, that you work with and that, that you know. You may not know the people where, where we stay and our neighbors and who, the people that I work with. So he's given each of us, each one of us, a way to go and share what he's done for us. And all we have to do, we don't have to know the whole Bible. We don't have to quote scripture. All we have to do is say, this is what Jesus has done for me. Amen. I was this way, and now I'm not. Amen. And through his love, as I grow in Christ, you also can get victory over whatever you're dealing with. So we're giving, we're giving them hope. And we're giving them the person in Jesus Christ where they can go to. He does say, come, come unto me, and I will give you rest, right? So that is that's that's our job is to share our love that we have that he's shown us to others in this dark evil world amen that's true and you know sharing even sharing this story of this uh, man that was healed from all those demons you know don't you think that there's other people in these today in this world that are struggling with an evil spirit with a demon 
you know, there's, there's very much that kind of thing going on in the world today. Children, like I shared that story about the child, there's children that are going through these experiences today and, you know, young ones are doing terrible things that they've never done, that we have never heard of before. And um, so we need, everybody, we need to share some of Jesus with others in our lives. And God will, God knows um, everyone's story. He knows, and we just have to believe that we're put in each other's lives for a reason. Um, Brother Evans. Uh, good morning. Um, good morning. The Bible talks about that whoever commits sin becomes a slave, you know, slave of sin, you know. So in that being demon possessed, you don't have to do some horrific crime or you know to be possessed by Satan. As long as you depart from the way of God, eventually that because there is two way of life. Either you accept Christ or you accept, you know, the um you know Satan policy. And so, you know, that's why God says to us, we guide the avenue of our heart, that one aspect, and as well as to be obedient to his commandment, because by being the fact, we actually being imported by a different spirit. And so that's why right now we have to be very careful. God, tell, God said to each one of us to be vigilant, to be alert, because the devil, he walks one through, seeking to be dead without. So right now it's now now we have to watch you know as more because of what is happening because you know we just have to keep our eyes focused on the rest of us. Amen. Thank you. And that's so true. Let's let's move on to another story here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna touch on Monday and then we're gonna go jump to Wednesdays, just to give you a little foresight there. Um so Monday's is lesson or daily reading was proclaiming the risen Christ, and we're gonna um, we're gonna look here at um, Mark sixteen one through eleven. That's where we'll start. Let's start off in scripture here. Mark sixteen one through eleven. And I have my NIV. Um, version here. Mark 16, 1 through 11. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're, this is talking about the resurrection. And it says, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus's body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. They were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who is crucified. He has risen. Don't be alarmed. He is not here. See the place where he, they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. Okay, so Mark, what was Mary's response when she discovered Christ had risen from the dead? So what can we read here about her response? So first we see that they specify here that after the Sabbath was over, then they went out to buy spices. Um, uh, to go anoint Jesus' body, and they go to the tomb, and the tomb is rolled, the stone's rolled away, and, and Jesus is not there, but there is an angel, and the angel frightens them, but tells them, do not be afraid, you know, and, um, and so what was, what was Mary's, Mary's uh, response here? Um, it says that she was um, trembled, trembling, and she was be bewildered, so she was afraid, 
But what was she afraid of? What was she afraid of? Hmm. Yeah. She was afraid of the scripture says because they had taken the Lord's body. So she was wondering where they had put it. That's one. That's one. And the reason that she was afraid of it. Yes. Yes. So that, and that's one of her responses, right? So that's part of her response. First, she was afraid. But then what happens? You know, she ends up meeting the resurrected Christ, right? So here, this is also her response. And um, she ended up meeting the resurrected Christ and she realized that she has good news. Hey, everybody, Christ is alive and he is risen from the grave. What do y'all have to say about that? She is excited. There is good news. You know what? She realizes I can't be quiet. So then we go back to the memory verse here, right? And what does it say? For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. She could not keep it to herself. She was very excited and um, and she just, she had to go and she had to share with others. And so, um, and for us today, you know, we're, it's the same way. Christ was resurrected, you know, and for us too, we must run and tell the story because good news is for sharing. And Brother Evans. Well, um, speaking about the resurrection, we read that Mary, she lingered, and all the other disciples, they came and they looked at the tomb, they kind of was empty. But she lingered, and the reason why she lingered because the Bible says that he who has to, he who has forgiven more, you know, she owed her life to Christ because of what Christ did to her. You know, you read that Christ at uh, three point in time where Christ forgave her because the second and the third time that's when she finally get it. You know, the demon keep on possessing her, making her do stuff that was kind of way, um, not right in God's sight. And then finally, you know, after she realized, listen, what God has done for her, now she commits herself fully to God, and that's why you know she brings her at the at the uh, at the so Yeah, that's why I say it's very important that we should be very careful how we live our life in this present time. Otherwise, we will be at a process. God says, "Be not deceived." You know, mm-hmm. there is deception going on for the place, but we should have this keep focus so that you know. Yes, thank you. Amen. Yes, we need to stay focused and stay connected to him every day because there's always someone watching. <clears throat> Even when we think no one's watching, there's somebody watching. You know, one more thing about this uh, story here. It should be very encouraging to us that like to share the good news about Jesus because some times we're discouraged. And why are we discouraged? Because um, we think that people should listen to us and, and should, you know, accept what we have to say right away. But that's not always the case. Just like here, you know, were, um, were the disciples believing, you know, did they accept the message? No, not right away. Some of them didn't accept it right away. And it says here that, that and when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. So thus, if even Jesus' own disciples didn't immediately believe, we shouldn't be surprised if others don't immediately accept our words either. So we shouldn't be discouraged. Brother Frank. Very, very true. Uh, but Jesus had told them that mm-hmm. this was going to happen. And then when it happened, and we have a witness to that, they still did not believe. <clears throat> and as Thomas said, I cannot believe because he wasn't in the room. When Thomas said, I have to see him for myself, is when Thomas got there with the disciples, uh, Jesus wasn't there. So even if the disciples were telling him, we've seen the master, he said, I don't believe it. So sometimes, we, you, as far as the disciples, they have to see to believe. God says, blessed are they that believe that haven't seen. So we, have a, we haven't seen, we weren't. We weren't alive at that time, but we have a hope. And I've never been to a funeral where the person that has passed away has came back from life. So there's a message there to tell the world that we believe in a risen Savior. Our God is not dead. Our God is alive. He's seated next to the Father. He's interceding for us. And he's saying, it's okay. Mr. Frank, he does some things wrong. 
but give him some time. He's going to love you. He, he continues to ask for forgiveness. He continues to try to grow in his knowledge of you. And that's what the Lord is doing for all of us. So all we have to do is ask, continue to ask for forgiveness and to continue to grow and believe and tell others that we may not have been there. But I know in my heart of hearts, he's not sleeping anymore. He's not in that, that cave. We serve a risen Savior. Amen. Amen. Yes. So um, I think we have time to look at. Oh, yeah, we do. We have time. We are going to go to Wednesday. Um, if y'all have your books, you can follow along. Um, and we do miss everyone here in church. Just know that you are missed. Um, one day we're all going to be together again in, in, in the church, and, and it'll be a great fellowship reunion. So we're praying. So everybody continue praying for the church, for the doors to be open, and for that day to come again where we could gather together. Don't lose hope. We should continue praying. Okay, so sharing our experience. Sharing our faith is always a dynamic experience. It is telling the story of what Christ has done for us in the past and what he is doing in our lives today and what he will accomplish for us in the future. Okay, so witnessing is never about us, however. It is always about him, and he is the God who forgives our iniquities, who heals our diseases, who crowns us with loving kindness, and satisfies us with good things. So let's go to um, 1 John 1, 1 through 3, and we're going we're gonna to look here about um, John. We're going to compare John and Paul's experiences here. And um, so let's go first to 1 John 1, 1 through 3. 1 John. It's like one of those little books towards the back of your Bible, you know, that you keep passing up and then you got to go back to. Right before Revelation. Right before Revelation. There you go. So 1 John. So if you went to 2 John, you went too far. Go back to 1 John. We're going to go to 1 John 1 to 3. The Word of Life. In my Bible, Bible, this part section is titled The Word of Life. So listen very closely. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it. We, have, we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. That went into verse 4. Um, okay, so now, so we first looked at 1 John. Now we're going to actually compare this with Galatians 2.20. Now a lot of people have Galatians 2.20 memorized. Um, for I am crucified with Christ, for it is no longer I that live but it's Jesus Christ that lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Amen. I, lo I love that verse, you know, uh, yeah, it's really great. Okay. So here, what do we see here? Although John and Paul had different life experiences, they both had a personal encounter with Jesus. Their experiences with Jesus were not ones that occurred at a particular point in the past and was one over and was then over. It was what? It was an ongoing daily experience of rejoicing in his love and walking in the light of his truth. Um, so how do we share our experience? you know, with others, you know, are we just as joyful as, as they are? Um, I mean, if we listen to the words, you know, that, that it is not I that live any longer, but it's Christ that lives in me. For someone to have that understanding that I am no longer the man that I used to be, you know, I no longer have the same thoughts. I no longer do the same 
things with my hands. My feet don't go the same places that they used to go. I don't listen to the same things with my ears any longer. You know, I, there is something else greater than me that is within me. And um, only, only those that have experienced that can relate to what that means. And for those that don't, they might want to know, what are they talking about? I want to have that experience. You, are you you're serious? There could be a greater power living in me. You know, Jesus Christ could really be living in me. Are you sure? Like, what are you talking about? I, I want to know this experience that you have had. Because I've, I've never even thought about Jesus Christ living in my heart, living in me, and changing me. I, I've never known that. So, um, so us sharing our experiences is, is very important. Um, here at the bottom of the page, it does say, um, it says to bring your answer to this question to class. So not very many people are here because our church is closed. However, if we read our lesson and we read the bottom of this page, um, everybody might have an answer to this. So let's just go over it. Regardless of whatever your past experiences have been, even if they were powerful and dramatic, why is it important to have a relationship with the Lord day by day to sense his reality and his goodness and power day by day? So bring your answer to class on Sabbath. So we have an answer for that this morning. It's important for us to not only witness to other people, but to re-witness to ourselves. Because a lot of people forget what happened or forget the significance of it in their lives. So Jesus has given us a two-pronged thing here. One, to encourage and talk to other people and let them know how Christ has changed our hearts. But also for us to look back because there's always backsliding in everybody's life. Mm -hmm. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has bad days. So we have to remember those things and keep them close in our heart. And remember what a marvelous feeling that burning in your chest or the, uh, just the glow that you had or something. Mm -hmm. It's so important to do that, to remember that, and to pass it on to yeah. give it to the next person. Amen. Yes, that continue. God, it continue. our heart continues beating for Jesus is what happens and that's so important because we don't want to forget what he's done for us because we have a chance of going back to making our same mistakes again so there's a lot of power and strength in remembering what he's done for us because once we remember what he's done for us it's going to make it harder for us to want to go back to our old ways because we now also know that it, it hurts him as well and um, brother evans yes um the bible is a Amen. Amen. My answer here that I have written in my book, it says um, that it also, um, the question was, why is it important to have that relationship with the Lord day by day? Um, because it also shows our appreciation of him to him. You know, that it shows him that we appreciate him. I mean, when somebody appreciates you, doesn't that make you feel good? I mean, don't we, don't we want to bring joy to the heart of the Lord? Um, also, Lisa, yeah. uh, as a relationship, he wants us to spend time with him daily so that our relationship can grow. Mm -hmm. And you look at a, at a husband and wife relationship, <clears throat> their love cannot grow 
if the husband, as soon as they get married, takes a job and goes away for months and then comes back one or two days and then goes away again and then comes back for just a day or two, <clears throat> that relationship can't develop into the relationship that God calls for as a husband and wife. So to develop that relationship, there has to be time spent together daily so you can understand each other's needs and help each other along the way when she's feeling bad or when she has a headache or when she just has a, a, a sweet tooth and she wants to go get him something to, to, to take care of that sweet tooth. We have to be there to be able to do that. And if and that's exactly the way it is with Christ. We have to spend time with him daily because this world, we have an enemy that never stops. And he's always out trying to get those that are following Christ. He doesn't care about those that are in the world because they already belong to him. He wants to attack those that are trying to follow the Lord and grow in him. So we, all, we have to understand that how did Jesus get strength to do what he did while he was here on earth? When, when the, the masses and the multitudes surrounded him, what did he have to do at night to go and get that strength for the next day? He had to go and lead the multitude and his disciples and go into the mountains and spend time with the Father, just him and the Father. And through that time of, of, of intimacy with the Father, he was able to come and do what he had to do the next day. And that's how we are. We are dependent on him. He's the source of our strength. Amen. You know, there's this children's song and it says, um, and it's a children's song. So it's important for our children also to come to him and receive strength as well. This is, I will seek you in the morning and I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step, you lead me and I will follow you all of my days. And that's a children's song, you know. Um, so it's important for us all and for us to show our, our little ones what it's like to come to him. Um, so we're going to be closing Sabbath school here soon. I just wanted to share um, this last thing, uh, a thought from Alan White. It says, The Savior knew that no argument, however logical, would melt hard hearts or break through the crust of worldliness and selfishness. He knew that his disciples must receive the heavenly endowment, that the gospel would be, only, would be effective only as it was proclaimed by hearts made warm and lips made eloquent by a living knowledge of him who is the way, the truth, and the life. You know, the wonderful love of Christ will melt and subdue hearts when the mere reiteration of doctrines would accomplish nothing. So um, let's, we're going to go ahead and pray, um, have a prayer for our Sabbath school that we just learned today. And um, thank you so much for joining us today. And please, please share, share any message today that you got that touched your heart or that you know might touch or change someone else's life as well. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we are just so grateful to you for all of your goodness and just for loving us and we are so grateful for the life that Jesus lived and for all the miraculous things that he did in the past and that he's continuing to do for us today. Lord, we ask for that power that is in the name of Jesus. We ask that when we speak the words um, that Jesus spoke, Lord, that when we speak words that are given to us, that they would be given with power, Lord, so that there would be um, healing and transformation taken place lord and that it these words would be powerful to those that we share with that their lives would be changed and their hearts would be changed as well as our own so we ask for your holy spirit to continue guiding us and leading us and teaching us lord and we ask that you would continue to give us strength and encouragement day by day lord please protect us and keep us safe in these times that we live in bless our church and our church family lord and continue blessing all the messages that are giving here in this sanctuary, Father. The ministers that give their sermons and those that are up here teaching and singing. Lord, we pray that you would continue just doing a wonderful work in us and in the church as well. Be with the, sermon, the pastor or Brother Frank today as he gives his sermon. And wherever the pastor is today, we ask that you would bless him as well too. 
Bless all the little children in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.